Hi, welcome back to this video. About, this video is about uh, Hysis, you know, using Hysis to make a methanol plant, uh, simulate a methanol plant rather. Yeah, sorry, it's been raining outside, so it's gonna be a bit stormy. Don't mind the thunder. Yep. <coughs> okay. So where we were last is the, how we can actually we were discussing how we can actually make a, a, di a diabetic uh, reactor into a diabetic reactor which is uh, cooked by jacketed uh, high pressure water to generate high pressure steam and we are discussing how we actually arrive at this uh, this power of 574.6 kilowatts uh, how we get that how do we arrive at the heat transfer rate I was iterating in the last video that we use uh, this uh, duty parameters and we use this formula this formula will help us to calculate the the u and which is the heat transfer coefficients for each of the sites and it will help us to arrive at a, a value for a suitable value for uh, getting you know uh, a, an appropriate heat transfer uh, rate okay so uh, now we kind of want to com compare it to uh, you know a, an adiabatic reactor to see how how the parameters have actually changed and we kind of want to optimize the the output uh, the single pass conversion of methanol as well as you know kind of try to get a better uh, steam production rate so that we can reduce cost because you can see uh, if you find out in your uh, you know you're, you're doing your plant design you find that actually steam cost is pretty high so you kind of want to generate as much high pressure steam as you can to make to like maximize the generation of exergy or gibbs free energy or whatever you call it so you want to generate as much high temperature steam as possible which also corresponds to high pressure steam and so okay first order of business let's actually uh, do some comparison some basic comparison so i want to clone I want to do uh, have a duplicate reactor or duplicate plug flow reactor and one preferably without the HPS high pressure steam or HPS generation. So I'm going to clone it and Aspen Hysis is going to ask these selectors objects have attached stream which have not been selected. Would you like these streams to be exported or copied as well? So by default my preference is always to put yes so that you know you have the whole system there already and since we have already uh, cloned it yeah that's what you get you have this uh, new reactor uh, this uh, new plug flow reactor with uh, reactants the second one and of course uh, the effluent coming out now of course you you have all the parameters uh, preserved and they'll copy every single parameter over conveniently so uh, now now that we have a clone, we want to kind of see whether uh, a diabetic setup is a, a really a better setup. So I'm going to delete this stream for the time being and I'm going to put the, for the, uh, the heat transfer as a direct Q value of zero. means no heat is being transferred out. And let's take a look at how, uh, let's just compare how much the methanol is being produced and the outlet temperature. So for one, if you look at this reactor effluent, uh, the second stream, the temperature is at 293.3 and um, we can see that uh, it's producing, the methanol production is about 153 kg mole per hour. And let's take a look at this reactor effluent which is the diabetic stream or the you know, stream with intercooling and you can see that the methanol produced actually increased due to you know, equilibrium. So let's actually try and increase our heat transfer out of the reactor system so we can get more methanol and more steam. So let's just try that. Uh, basically I'm going to try and uh, reduce the temperature of this uh, plug flow reactor. So for one, I can actually do that by increasing the number of tubes. So let's go from 100 to 200. So we double the heat transfer area. You can see that the effluent actually drops by about 20, uh, another 3 degrees C. It was 288 before and now it's about 285. And we have the amount of power coming out has about doubled. So let's take a look at this. 
yeah. let's take a look at the heat transfer parameters you see at 67 but now you can, you can see it's about 113.6 so let's try that 113.6 so you have to make sure these two numbers match or uh, within a reasonable range uh, so that you know that your calculations are more or less accurate so now it's about 114.9 well this is 113.6 let's just put it at 114 and we'll just leave it as that it should be pretty close 114.8 and 114 so that's then 1% difference so it's pretty good so we can have a stream out at 285 and we see the we see the production has actually increased we see about another 10% up it was about 165 before now it's gone up to about 176 so it's about slightly less than 10% increase in methanol production so that's good news for us so I mean we can have more tubes in our, our plug flow reactor to kind of uh, let us let us uh, tran to help us transfer more heat out of the system so I, I don't know how many uh, uh, tubes there are in the outside world you have to go and check yourself and uh, input this uh, rating accordingly but I'll, I'll just leave it as 200 tubes for the time being so let's actually uh, you know try increase our generation of uh, steam and single pass conversion so I'm going to reduce this uh, yeah I'm going to reduce I'm going to just do some tweaking I'm going to reduce this uh, temperature to 260 in and I'm going to reduce it to 260 as well so we can have a good comparison so we can see that the outlet uh, reactor effluent temperature is about 282 and we can see that the methanol production has also increased and even for the non for the adiabatic, adiabatic case is also increased because of you know equilibrium so let's just see how far we can actually push it uh, and uh, after that of course I'm going to you know just adjust these uh, parameters until you have the convergence again of this uh, high pressure steam molar flow rate why am I doing that is just to make sure that you know the flow rates are actually you know, correct uh, if you are talking about real heat exchanger per se so anyway let's try pushing our luck down to about 250 250 and that's like sort of the lower limit for steam generation because the steam is being generated about 250 degrees C so we can't actually have that low a temperature so 250 is our bare minimum so it's exiting about 280 degrees C and um, 250 is our bare minimum right so in our adiabatic case it's at exiting at 286 in our diabetic case it's exiting about 279.5 and um, let's take a look at the output 193 it was 153 before and this is 175 so you can see that the lower the temperature the better your single pass conversion uh, selectivity to methanol as well so I'm just gonna close it for now let's just keep it at 250 and let's uh, just do some convergence of this uh, heat transfer parameters so it's about 114 now and this should be shouldn't have changed um, what was it before 50,000 uh, watts per meter square per Kelvin and this HPS is about 89 so I just put 89.45 so yeah that's pretty close 89.22 okay so we're out at 279.6 so that's pretty reasonable and uh, you may wonder how how is this uh, 250 uh, if this uh, reactor reactants are going at about 250 degrees C how is it going to generate steam well the thing is that it can't because probably the first few uh, the first uh, few segments are going to be used to heat the thing up right yeah it's going to heat you're going to need to uh, heat this uh, uh, reactor rea the reactants up first and just to give you a flavor of what that looks like let's just have this at about 240 or 230 even in fact just for example 
you can see if we, we switch this thing to 230 we can see that the from this uh, reactor performance so I'm going to this uh, plug flow reactor I'm going to the performance side and I can see the the length and the temperature profile so as a plug flow reactor increases in length the temperature actually spikes up to about 277 up from 234 and it drops back down to 274 right here so you can see the duty at the first few segments is actually negative because uh, probably you'll, you'll be using some of the high pressure steam to heat this up to uh, an appropriate temperature and the reaction is of course moving on um, so on the whole you generate less high pressure steam but your single pass conversion actually increases so now it's about 210 so these are the kind of trade-offs you need but as you can you might guess that hey if this thing this length is uh, the, the step size is so big then how are you going to accurately calculate it right so uh, what we might want to do to increase the the accuracy of our calculations to increase these segments from about 20 to 50 so this is the integration we're going to use 50 uh, we're going to cut this plug flow reactor into 50 segments instead of 20 as before so that you have a kind of a more accurate performance uh, calculation so you can see that uh, over here you have a lot more accurate calculations you can see the duties the first few are negative and the last few are positive okay so let's bring this back up to about 250 because we, we want it at 250 so that we can like I mean the, the methanol generation in my opinion wasn't so much I mean if you're going to optimize your own plug you got to do your own calculations the trade off of single pass conversion versus high pressure steam generation so you got to you know take a look at that for yourself but for now we're just going to stick at 250 in we're going to see whether this phenomena is actually observed you can see like for the first for the first part there's actually some heat transfer into into the reactants and then some of the heat starts uh, coming out so over here some of the high pressure steams that's being generated actually condenses and that's that's not an issue that's not actually an issue so uh, so the high pressure steam actually kind of tries to keep the reactor isothermal well it's not exactly isothermal it's, uh, it's just to cool the reactor and generate the steam so yeah, so at the first few uh, in the first few lengths you see that the duty is very is negative, then it starts to increase, so the reactor temperature actually spikes to, to about 284. So you can see like for this case, uh, even though the outlet temperature is about 279, 280, uh, there will be temperature spikes. And that's to be expected. Uh, it will spike to about 284 so if you want to look at a temperature spike within a, a diabetic reactor or jacketed reactor you can take a look at this performance conditions and you should increase this number of segments maybe to uh, appropriate number maybe 50 30 100 so that you can uh, check where, where whether the duty is negative and whether the temperature spikes up that much and yeah that's about it and you just want to check again that we are really using about 89.45 kg uh, mole per hour of steam or we are generating that much so we are still and that's not a problem so yeah you can see that 250 is a much better temperature to be actually getting methanol it's a good in my opinion a good trade-off between uh, steam generation and methanol generation so this steam can be used to heat up other parts of the plant so we'll just leave it as that all right so yeah, so in this video, we actually seen a comparison between the diabetic and adiabatic reactors. Because uh, adiabatic reactors, they don't actually cool anything down. So the temperature just keeps increasing and increasing. But for diabetic reactors, uh, jacketed reactors, you can actually uh, cool the thing down, cool the reactor down using a, a high pressure steam generation. And you can see the temperature profile in this tab here. And you can also, uh, you know, adjust your parameters uh, using this uh, using this rating tab to see how many number of tubes you want. And the more number of tubes, the more the larger the heat transfer area, of course. And you can input your heat transfer area here, as shown in the last video. So okay, so this is uh, about 15 minutes of you know comparing uh, adiabatic and diabetic reactors. And in the next video, we want to actually talk about.
uh, heat exchangers and how we uh, can start to do the rigorous heat exchanger modeling. So thanks for watching. I'll probably see you guys in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching again. Please do like, subscribe, and comment if you have any questions. If you like the video, or if you have any questions. So bye bye.